Hello and welcome to Screen Jumper, a series of video essays on the convergence of film and video games. My name is Aaron Julian, and today I want to talk about the 1992 film Hard Boiled and its 2007 video game sequel, Stranglehold. Hard Boiled is one of the coolest films I've ever seen. It's a forgotten legend among Hong Kong action cinema, and went on to influence countless films worldwide after its premiere. It's directed by John Woo. He started his career as a director with several mediocre comedy films before his breakout success with A Better Tomorrow, which was influenced by his love of French New Wave and Japanese films, such as Les Samurai, Seven Samurai, The Wild Bunch, The Wages of Fear, and Lawrence of Arabia, as well as his work in the Hong Kong Kung Fu genre with the Shaw Brothers Studio. A Better Tomorrow combined Wu's various influences to become the first implementation of gun ballet. No, not that stupid trash in Equilibrium. We don't talk about that movie here. By gun ballet, I'm talking about a combination of Western gun violence with Eastern Kung Fu action and Chinese operatic grandeur. It was completely new at the time and set the tone of action movies for the next 15 years. It was brilliant. This was followed up with A Better Tomorrow 2, solidifying John Woo's style, which combines gun ballet with character-driven drama, themes of loyalty, honor, and chivalry, theatrically surreal violence, in a touch of the absurd to make what we know today as the heroic bloodshed genre, usually focusing on a flawed protagonist seeking some kind of spiritual redemption through violence, culminating in a blood-soaked final showdown. John Woo was successful enough among the independent and foreign film audience in America to get the attention of Hollywood, but before he hopped over the pond, he made one last film in Hong Kong. That film was Hard Boiled, starring Xiao Yun Fat and Tony Leung. Hard Boiled begins in a tea house in Hong Kong. Inspector Tequila Yuan and his partner Benny attempt to nab a group of gun-smuggling gangsters during a deal involving guns hidden in bird cages. The deal goes bad and a fierce gun battle breaks out, resulting in the deaths or severe wounding of several police officers, many civilians, and all of the gangsters. In the chaos, Benny is killed, and Tequila gets revenge by killing the gangster responsible, who turns out to be an undercover cop. His boss, Superintendent Pang, is furious, and now Tequila, who plays clarinet at a local jazz bar, is without a drummer and partner due to Benny's death. He's consoled by the bartender, a former cop played by John Woo himself. Elsewhere, a high-ranking assassin named Alan, who works for a triad boss named Uncle Hoy, kills off a member of Hoy's gang, who had been caught working for a rival gangster, Johnny Wong. Tequila is assigned to the case and finds the murder weapon hidden in a book, but gets no further. At the police station, he's trying to figure out where to live after a breakup with a fellow cop named Teresa. She asks for Tequila's help in decoding a message hidden in the notes of a song whose lyrics are passed to her by gifts of white roses. Uncle Hoy warns Alan to keep an eye on Foxy, a gang member he suspects is an undercover cop. Foxy invites Alan to meet Johnny, whose men were involved in the tea house incident. They meet at a restaurant and befriend one another, but Alan refuses to work with him out of loyalty to Uncle Hoy. Outside the restaurant, Wong is confronted by Tequila, who has been taken off the case, yet holds Johnny responsible for Benny's death. Johnny tries to kill Tequila, but Alan stops him. Foxy orchestrates a raid on Uncle Hoy's gun-smuggling warehouse by Johnny's men, but also tips off the location to Tequila beforehand for a fee. At the warehouse, the raid is led by Mad Dog, Johnny's right-hand man. It's no contest. Hoy's men are wiped out, and Johnny's men make off with Hoy's stock of weapons. Johnny convinces Alan to join him, and he does so, reluctantly turning against the Honorable Uncle Hoy, killing him and the rest of his men. Just then, Tequila throws a few smoke grenades and zip lines into the warehouse. Alan covers Johnny's escape as Tequila battles and kills most of the gangsters. Mad Dog manages to escape, and the battle ends with Alan and Tequila holding each other at gunpoint. Tequila tries to shoot Alan, but has run out of ammo. Inexplicably, Alan chooses to spare Tequila, making his escape. Later, Alan laments his betrayal of Uncle Hoy while aboard his sailboat. At the police station, Tequila suspects that Alan is an undercover cop and angrily confronts Pang. He tries to rein in Tequila's hot temper. Tequila vows to arrest or kill Johnny, and Pang threatens to take his badge away. Tequila meets with the bartender, who sympathizes with him. Foxy confirms he knows Alan and gives Tequila the location of his boat. Pang speaks one-on-one -on -one with Alan about Tequila, confirming that Alan is an undercover cop. Pang remembers Alan's birthday, which he himself has forgotten, and gives him a lighter. Later, Tequila confronts Alan on his boat. Alan reveals that he crafts a paper crane after each person he kills. Tequila proposes they work together so they can make a crane for Johnny. 
Alan initially refuses, but after Tequila helps him fend off an attack from the remainder of Hoy's men, and being wounded in the process, he agrees to work together. Johnny and his men show up and escort Alan to the hospital, where Johnny reveals he knows Foxy is an undercover cop and betrayed Alan by revealing his location to Hoy's men. Johnny vows to take care of him, but Alan insists on revenge, learning that Foxy knows where Johnny's arsenal of weapons is kept. Foxy is beaten senseless by Mad Dog before Alan shoots him, but not before planting his lighter in his breast pocket, saving his life. At the jazz bar, Tequila once again seeks advice for how to treat Alan, and the bartender urges him to help his friend. A critically wounded Foxy stumbles into the bar, revealing Maple Hospital to be the location of Johnny's arsenal. Tequila rushes him there to save his life, asking the bartender to have Teresa meet him there. At the hospital, Tequila sees some suspicious-looking police officers. Elsewhere, Johnny receives a tip that Foxy is still alive, brought to the hospital by Tequila. Alan vows to finish the job, and Johnny reluctantly agrees, but orders Mad Dog and a few men to follow him. Inside the hospital, Tequila tries to talk with Foxy, who thinks that he's a dead man. Tequila receives a paper crane from a nurse, signaling that Alan is there. Tequila moves Foxy to another room for safety. Alan bursts into a patient room, pulling a silenced handgun out of a box of roses and shooting an empty bed. Two of Johnny's men rush into the room before Alan and Tequila take them out. Tequila agrees to lead Alan to the weapons, but they find that Foxy has been killed by Mad Dog. They follow Mad Dog to a basement area and see what appears to be weapons being carried in by stretcher from ambulances. They meet with Teresa, who has secured plans for the building. They guess that the arsenal must be connected to the morgue. Tequila introduces Alan to Teresa, to whom he has been sending the white roses with coded messages to secretly communicate with Peng. Tequila arranges to have Teresa evacuate the patients in the hospital when she receives flowers from him, while secretly planting a white rose in her pocket. Teresa calls for the superintendent, while Tequila poses as a doctor to get into the morgue. He stages a surprise attack with Alan smuggled in on a stretcher. They begin to inspect the morgue for a secret entrance to the arsenal. Meanwhile, Teresa meets up with Peng, who, along with other cops, is disguised as part of the medical staff. Tequila and Alan discover the hidden entrance to the arsenal. Meanwhile, Teresa and Peng discuss Alan and Tequila, each hoping for their safety. Peng realizes that Teresa still cares for Tequila. Tequila and Alan attempt to open the door to the arsenal unsuccessfully while arguing over whose case this is. Tequila devises a plan to blow open the wiring on the door with a well-aimed shot. This doesn't open the door, but Alan connects the sparking wires to other wiring, injuring himself and opening the door. Tequila flashes back to Benny's death and rushes to Alan's aid, just as Mad Dog emerges from the door. Alan comes to just in time for a gunfight with Mad Dog. Meanwhile, Teresa discovers Tequila's planted rose as Johnny arrives at the hospital. The fight in the arsenal continues as Johnny looks on. Teresa pulls the fire alarm to evacuate the patients, and Mad Dog makes his escape, locking Tequila and Alan into the arsenal. The evacuation of the patients continues until Johnny cuts the lights, locks the doors, and starts shooting the patients. The main police force shows up to the hospital, but Johnny's men keep them at bay. He decides to take the remaining patients hostage, including Teresa, Peng, and several police officers. Tequila and Alan load up on weapons. Johnny taunts them from a surveillance room as a hostage rescue force gathers outside of the hospital. Alan laments about the difficulties of being an undercop while desiring to protect the innocent like a typical cop would. He dreams of moving to Antarctica so he can enjoy perpetual light to escape his inner darkness. The two blow up the morgue wall and successfully fight their way out. Meanwhile, Johnny's men discover an undercover cop and execute him. Mad Dog tries to persuade Johnny to let the hostages go, but Johnny refuses. Tequila and Alan make their way towards the hostages, taking out several of Johnny's men, but are caught in a Mexican standoff. It appears that one of Johnny's men, dressed as a cop, has taken Tequila hostage, but it's really Alan, and the two manage to take out Johnny's men and free Teresa, Pang, and a large group of hostages. Soon, more hostages evacuate, but Teresa warns Tequila that there is a room full of newborns that need to be saved. They put cotton in the baby's ears as a hostage rescue team enters the hospital. They help Teresa as Tequila leaves to help Alan. Tequila and Alan fight their way through two floors of the hospital, Alan accidentally killing a cop in the confusion. As the cops continue trying to save the babies, Tequila and Alan run into an intense fight with Mad Dog. Meanwhile, Teresa and the police are ambushed, but she manages to kill the attacker. Tequila overhears a policeman radio for help, 
and he decides to go help Teresa while Alan fights Mad Dog. Tequila arrives just in time to help Teresa escape, then goes and grabs the last baby himself. Johnny begins to set explosives around the hospital. Tequila shoots several of Johnny's men while protecting the last baby, taking a bullet in the process. Alan and Mad Dog continue to fight throughout the hospital until they come upon opposite sides of a room full of hostages. They silently agree to lay down their weapons and let them go. Just then, Johnny enters, blowing the patients away as Alan makes a run for it. Enraged, Mad Dog shoots Johnny before Johnny kills Mad Dog. Tequila helps Alan escape as Johnny threatens to blow up the hospital. He sets off some of the explosives before Alan leaves Tequila to pursue Johnny, affirming that he is indeed a cop. Tequila dodges explosions as he runs with the baby. His pants are set on fire, but the baby manages to put it out. Tequila improvises a bungee cord from exposed wiring and makes a miraculous leap to safety. He escapes and reunites with Teresa. More explosions rip through the hospital before Johnny emerges with Alan as his hostage. Tequila stands up to Johnny, but Johnny mocks and humiliates him. Alan shoots himself to expose Johnny, and Tequila shoots him in the eye. Alan is presumed dead, and his police file is burned by paying in Tequila, but he survives to release his paper cranes and live out the rest of his days on the sea. Let's talk about the themes we see at work in Hard Boiled, which are present in most of Wu's work. Firstly, Wu continually values codes of chivalry, morality, and honor. In this movie, both cops and gangsters alike hold to these codes. Teresa and Pang are trying to uphold the law while bringing dangerous criminals to justice and protecting the innocent. Uncle Hoi, though he runs a crime syndicate, is kind, generous, and loyal to his men. Even Mad Dog values loyalty and refuses to harm the innocent. Johnny seals his fate by valuing personal gain above all else, seeing just how far he can go. Alan is caught in the middle of two codes of honor, that of the crime syndicates he is trying to infiltrate, and his duties as a cop, and he is constantly placed in situations that put these codes at odds. Tequila is right there with him, both of them murkier in their morality than they would like to admit, but both are trying to do the right thing. Tequila even appeals to Wu as a moral guide, who himself appeals to God as his own guide. No surprise considering Wu's spiritual background. John Wu also values friendship and allies in his works. Tequila has Wu himself as a spiritual mentor, Alan as a kindred spirit, unlikely ally, and fellow gun, Teresa as a police co-worker, yet scorned lover, Superintendent Peng as his boss, who really wants the best thing for him and the department, even though their relationship is strained with conflict, Benny as his partner and drummer before he is killed in the tea house shootout, and even Foxy, a fellow cop who has gone deep undercover. Alan is really the only lone wolf character, who finds his loyalties changing like the wind until his bond with Tequila solidifies and he regains his identity as a cop, symbolized by his readoption of the uniform in the hospital. It's interesting to note that Hard Boiled also contains a love story, though it is certainly not fixed on it. Tequila has just broken up with Teresa and needs to find a place to live. He is torn between his loose cannon nature as a cop and his love for Teresa. He seems to resolve this by the end of the movie by working with Teresa to save the babies, ensuring her safe escape, and demonstrating that he is willing to sacrifice for the sake of others. To symbolize this, the last baby he rescues extinguishes the fire on his legs, symbolizing the caring, compassionate side of him, cooling his hot-headed temper. Before we move on to Stranglehold, it's important to note the aesthetics of Hard Boiled, which is marked with Wu's signature gun ballet style, extensive use of slow motion, over-the-top action combined with environmental destruction, and the improvised nature of the stunts. Yes, all of the stunts in Hard Boiled were mostly improvised on the day of shooting, as this is how Wu preferred to work. Now, enough about Hard Boiled, let's talk about its sequel, Stranglehold. This game, released in 2007, was developed by Midway Chicago in collaboration with John Wu and his company, Tiger Hill Entertainment. It is unclear to what extent Wu was involved in the development of the game, as some sources indicate he was directly involved in every step, while others say he only did the story in storyboards, but nevertheless, his involvement is not a mere endorsement of the final product. Midway also managed to involve Xiao Yun Fat to reprise his role as Inspector Tequila, lending his likeness and voice to the game. This is the first Midway game to be made with the Unreal 3 engine, its design heavily influenced by a previous Midway game, PsyOps. Early prototypes for the game even feature PsyOps assets, and many of the crew from that game carried over to Stranglehold. 
The game's story begins in Hong Kong, circa 2006, with the disappearance of a policeman. Tequila goes alone to the Kowloon market to meet the kidnapper. Tequila is attacked by a number of triad gangsters before discovering the missing officer's badge, complete with a bloody bullet hole and a photograph of the dead officer. While in a standoff with more triad gangsters, Tequila learns that the officer was assassinated by a gang called the Imperial Nines. Tequila stops in a local tea house owned by the triad group Golden Cane, where he visits a John Woo cameo for his usual drink, lifted straight from the movie. In the tea house, the I-9s are making a deal with the Golden Cane for forged passports. The deal goes bad, and Tequila finds himself in a shootout with Golden Cane members and a bouncer by the name of Kwong Fang, whom he defeats. Tequila leaves for Tai O to investigate the I-9s, who he has heard is working under the Dragon Claw Triad. Tai O is under I-9 control, but is being attacked by Golden Cane. Tequila fights his way through the fishing village to find the Dragon Claw leader, Jimmy Wong, and is introduced to his two top men, Depang and Jerry, a fellow police officer trained by Tequila who is working undercover for Dragon Claw. Wong reveals that Golden Cane was responsible for the officer shooting and pinned it on his I-9s. Wong has not struck back because Golden Cane has allied with the Chicago Russian mob group, the Zakharovs, who have kidnapped his daughter Billy and granddaughter Tico, who happen to be Tequila's ex-wife and daughter, respectfully, holding them hostage for a slice of Dragon Claw's territory. With no choice, Tequila leaves to go retrieve Billy and Tico for Wong. Tequila makes a stop at the Golden Cane-owned restaurant Mega, where Golden Cane leader Yung Gi is planning to visit the Zakharovs to learn about their organization as well as serve as the middleman in the exchange of Billy and Tico to Wong. Young's right-hand man, Tai Lok, fights off Tequila while Young escapes, but is no match for the inspector. Meanwhile, Young is in Chicago, touring the Zakharov family's museum, a cover for their gun and drug smuggling operation. Tequila arrives with Jerry, who is trying to keep his cover with Wong. Jerry and Tequila agree to split up the penthouse, but Vladimir Zakharov taunts Tequila, claiming to have killed Jerry. Tequila fights his way to the penthouse top floor, where he battles with Vlad on an attack helicopter before blowing him out of the sky. Tequila discovers a wounded Jerry and helps him escape. Tequila visits the museum next, finding Damon Sakharov and Jung, who have agreed to split up Billy and Tico. Tequila chases Damon into the museum to save Billy, fighting off Damon's men and killing the man himself. He briefly unites with Billy before being betrayed by Jerry, who mortally wounds Billy. Tequila receives forgiveness from Billy before battling Jerry, who reveals that Wong paid him off to kill Billy. Tequila manages to kill Jerry, then retrieves his phone, letting Wong believe that Jerry has killed him. Tequila confronts Jung, asking for Tico, but Jung refuses, wanting to use Tico to barter with Wong for territory. Tequila reveals that Wong is planning to eliminate the Golden Cane. Tequila offers to interfere with the plan to bring down Golden Cane if he could retrieve Tico. Young agrees to the plan, and the meeting location is set to an old, rundown neighborhood in Kowloon. The exchange goes down, but Tequila isn't on time. Young tries to stall Wong unsuccessfully. Wong escapes with Tico, Depang guns down Young, and Tequila pursues Dragon Claw to their home base, an old and impressive temple. Tequila fights his way through security and confronts Wong and Depang who wound Tico with a shot to the arm. Tequila manages to gun down Wong's men and Depang, but is pinned down by Wong until Tico unexpectedly throws him to his death. Tequila reunites with his daughter, while Superintendent Lee arrives and returns Tequila's badge. Okay, that was a lot to get through, but now it's time for the nitty-gritty comparison between Hard Boiled and Stranglehold. First, I want to set my criteria of what makes a good sequel. Too much similarity between the original and the sequel is a stagnant experience. This is like a twin brother who dresses and acts just like his sibling. However, too much innovation is an entirely different experience alike in name only. It feels like an imposter, like a stranger with the same last name. To me, a proper sequel maintains the core experience of the original while innovating enough to be fresh and interesting, like a well-loved adopted brother. Let's unwrap the first half of that question. Does Stranglehold maintain the core experience of Hard Boiled? In short, yes, yes, and yes. Here's how it does it right. Firstly, Stranglehold has carefully chosen gameplay elements that properly emulate the experience of Hard Boiled. Players can leap through the air and interact with the environment in all different kinds of ways to gain the edge on their opponents. For example, they can slide on food carts, slide along tables, 
run up and down banisters, swing from chandeliers, and duck behind columns and other forms of cover. Tequila time, which is bullet time under a crappier name, and tequila bombs, special abilities used by the player, both serve to emulate the behavior of tequila in Hard Boiled. Slow motion is a no-brainer, but the tequila bombs, which include healing, precision aiming, a barrage of unlimited ammo, and a ballet shoot and twirl that kills everyone in the room, do a great job of widening the palette of choices available to the player to overcome his enemies. The game was built with an environmental destruction feature known as... <sighs> Massive D. <laughs> to make almost every prop and piece of cover in the game destructible. The player can even use many of these props to take out enemies stylishly. The gunplay is extremely stylized, with no reloads. A smart choice to keep the combat hectic and consistent with John Boo's vision. And, of course, Tequila's spin attack move comes complete with doves, a John Boo staple. The game includes multiple Mexican standoff sequences, which somehow managed to be even more over-the-top absurd than anything seen in Wu's films. Perfect. Awesome. Secondly, Stranglehold pays lots of attention to detail to pay respect to John Wu's work in order to properly maintain the core experience of Hard Boiled. Many of the moves players could pull off are lifted straight from Hard Boiled or other Wu films. The Tea House stage of the game is an obvious reconstruction of the Tea House shootout in Hard Boiled, yet it is not the carbon copy. Wu himself shows up as his bartender role. You can even unlock him as a playable multiplayer character. At least you could if the multiplayer was still working. The restaurant stage allows you to plant guns and ammo to retrieve later. A nod to a better tomorrow. And one of the texts Tequila sends to Wong includes Bullet in the Head, the title of Wu's Vietnam War epic. As Tequila becomes more and more injured, his bloody wounds increase, a hallmark of heroic bloodshed films. Overall, the aesthetics are more than skin deep and are clearly a labor of love, as sequels should be. The stunts, hectic gunfights, Mexican standoffs, environmental destruction, and set pieces all carry John Wu's signature style. The player's ability to effectively create their own stunts reflects Wu's style of improvising his own stunts on the day of shooting. Tequila time and tequila bombs help in crafting the Wu protagonist experience without being too video gamey. Unfortunately, Stranglehold carries over a few things it probably shouldn't have. Firstly, the crappy English dubs. Why not keep the game voiceovers in Cantonese? They're a lot better in Hard Boiled than the English dubs. Was Midway worried about the game not selling? They already had a very specific audience in mind. I have a hard time believing, in light of how successful The Sims is as a franchise, that having a foreign language game with English subtitles would significantly hurt the experience of the game. Also, why bring back Wu as the bartender if it was just going to be a cameo? He helped Tequila a lot in Hard Boiled. Why not in Stranglehold? Additionally, there's a disturbing lack of continuity with Hard Boiled. Stranglehold feels too self-contained. None of the events or characters from Hard Boiled seem to have affected the world of Stranglehold in any way at all. Aside from the nods to Wu's prior works, there's no mention of all of what went down in Hard Boiled. Why not? It's not like there's no potential. What if rival gangs moved in to fill Johnny's vacuum of power left behind after his death? That could very well be interesting, and hit all the same set pieces Stranglehold does. Let's move on to the second criteria of a good sequel. Does Stranglehold innovate enough to be fresh and interesting? Yes, but not as emphatically as before. Firstly, how Stranglehold innovates in the right direction. Stunts are player-controlled instead of carefully choreographed, and it feels very different than watching the action unfold by itself in Hard Boil. This is a very good thing. Remember how movies are different than video games, that they lack procedural rhetoric? Stranglehold allows the player to create their own crazy stunts in the style of Hard Boiled, by giving them plenty of opportunities and means to do so in the mechanics and the level design. I can hardly overstate it. In this area, Midway nailed it. They managed to successfully translate the gun ballet action in the movie to the procedural rhetoric in the game. Sadly, I feel they tried to innovate too much in areas that they shouldn't have, mainly with the story. Although they attempt to flesh out Tequila with a bit of a backstory, this is exactly the wrong thing for a sequel to do. You don't mess with the canon of the original in crafting your sequel. If this movie takes place in 2006, and Hard Boiled takes place in 1991, that means, according to Tico's age, Tequila had a wife and daughter in 1988. How is this not mentioned at all in Hard Boiled? 
I understand that Tequila and Teresa's relationship wasn't dwelled upon in the movie, but surely Teresa must know about them at some point, especially if she and Tequila live together? No. And it appears that Tequila and Teresa reunite at the end of Hard Boiled. Does her absence in Stranglehold signal that their relationship, despite all the progress made, never worked out? If so, that's really disappointing. I also sense that Stranglehold's story fails to honor the themes that seem to matter to Wu so much, such as chivalry, honor, morality, spirituality, friendship, brotherhood. Tequila's only friends in Stranglehold are his two pistols. No advisor, no friend, no boss in his best interest. Tequila is a good man in a bad world where everybody is corrupt. There is no real moral code of honor or chivalry, even among the gangs. In many respects, Stranglehold is closer to a film noir than a John Woo film. Perhaps this is due to Wu's years in Hollywood changing him, but I can't say for sure. Stranglehold's story is also marred with flat, uninteresting characters. Hard-boiled in pretty much every John Woo film, has every conflict matter and seem important because we identify with the characters, what they want and what their struggle is. It's all well and good that Tequila wants to find Billy and Tico, but I myself don't care at all because I don't know anything about who they are or what they want. They feel like MacGuffins, existing purely to drive the plot forward, like a carrot on a stick in front of Tequila. It's hard for me to identify with them, so it's hard for me to put any significance on any of the fights. Kind of a big deal. The villains are one-sided, simple, and therefore boring. Part of making the hero seem tough, cool, and interesting is pitting him against a tougher, cooler, more interesting villain. This makes the fight between them compelling and memorable. We see this with Mad Dog, who is complex because, despite being a killer, he values loyalty and will not harm civilians, risking his fight with Alan to let them go. Even Johnny is memorable because, despite his craftiness and cleverness, will not stop at anything just to see how far he can go. Stranglehold's villains have none of these shades of gray. They're just boring targets standing in the player's way. This is what contributes to the fight seeming a bit repetitive. Granted, the game emphasizes emergent gameplay heavily, relying on the player to create a good portion of the experience, but I feel it could use more innovation in what it asks the player to do. A good example of this is the restaurant level, where it asks me to place the weapons and ammo before the fight. This doesn't have to be in every level, but why can't there be more variety like this? I think I've said enough to give my verdict on the game as an adaptation of Hard Boiled. Stranglehold comes very close to nailing it as the perfect sequel to Hard Boiled. It does a very good job of maintaining the core experience, especially in translating the experience to the gameplay, and an adequate job of innovation but has difficulty in creating meaningful, memorable characters, instead creating a universe that seems too self-contained and different in tone to be a totally graceful sequel. The game doesn't have enough substance to stand on its own, but is as flawless and stylish a love letter to the heroic bloodshed genre as one can ask for, and a damn good adaptation between the mediums, all things considered. It's a lean, mean, killing machine that perhaps loses touch with its predecessor too much, but delivers a satisfying experience nonetheless that cannot be accused of failing to pay its proper respects to its influences, the films of John Woo. If I were to make recommendations for improvement, I would pay special attention to the continuity in events and characters between Hard Boiled and Stranglehold, making the events and characters matter to me as a player. I would ask players to do more different things with the tools they've been given, and I would focus more on the themes originally established by John Woo. Perhaps a co-op shooter would have been closer to his vision. Case in point, Midway was set to make Gunrunner, a sequel to Stranglehold that would have starred Xiao Yun Fat and Vin Freaking Diesel, but with the bankruptcy of Midway, we'll never know how awesome that game would have been. If you like what you've seen of Hard Boiled, by all means, go watch it. Today. And for further viewing, I recommend the following. A Better Tomorrow and A Better Tomorrow 2, The Killer, Bullet in the Head, Hard Target, Face Off, Once a Thief, and Manhunt, a film set for release in 2016, based on the video game by the same name and directed by John Woo himself. Believe me, I'll be covering it. Finally, I'd like to leave you with my favorite scene from Hard Boiled and my favorite sequence from Stranglehold. This has been a Screen Jumper case study from Saboteur Studios. Thank you for watching.
你系咪濑嘢啊？顶你一脚啊！小心想杀咗个差佬，唔系，我肯定佢系差佬嚟。唔系啊，佢身上面有 pass 啊，系呢个坏角嚟嘅。你我讲几多次你先信我啊？即系话我唔系差佬嚟噶。你最大嘅敌人就系你自己，你自己分唔赢你自己，你点样出去同人打啊？打住啊！我为咗查呢单嘢，上咗云楼茶楼怼冧咗个自己友啊！彭 Sir 又同我讲，我打死咗佢之后先知，觉得点啊？心情比你郑华更加严重。咁头先我真系差佬嚟噶啦，系啊，扑街啊！
Thank <laughs> you.